Aloha, everybody, and welcome to part five of Mega Man Maverick Hunter X. So now we are tackling the final Maverick until the Big Bad Sigma Castle. It is Sting Chameleon, who, for some reason, every time I play in Mega Man X3, I always confuse Toxic Seahorse with Sting Chameleon. <laughs> I, I always feel like he's in two games because he's just he's so similar to Toxic Seahorse. But, uh, you know. I just wanted to share that little tidbit with you guys. So here we're going to find another Hurt Tank, but also another Dr. Light upgrade. And uh, some people will say that, no, no, skip it, Clement. Go get the other upgrade in the Sigma Castle. There's, like, no difference. There's really no difference. I mean, yeah, the damage values might be a little different. But not, nah, not really. Anywho, here's Dr. Light's Protector Robot protecting his light capsule, and we'll use Storm Tornado twice, and... Yeah. <laughs> Didn't this guy used to be really hard once? Oh, well. The arm parts await you here. Enter the capsule and equip them to your arm, and your charge shot becomes even more powerful. It is a very dangerous power to possess, but I trust that you will use it for good. And if not, I've doomed dozens of people to a crazy robot with a giant arm cannon. Oh well! <laughs> so yes, this is an upgrade for the X-Buster. You can charge it up beyond the green. And boom! There's your pink laser, which does a good chunk of damage. Also, when you charge up, you can also use all the special weapons differently. Homing Tornado shoots all of those fish robots that launch octopus shots. Uh, Sting Chameleon, this is a spoiler, but when you use Sting Chameleon's ability, it makes you invincible for a short period of time. You can literally walk through anything and nothing will damage you until it wears off. Rolling Shield, kind of similar. You charge it up and you get a shield power-up that protects you, and it can kill certain enemies in one hit, but not every enemy. <laughs> and once you run into an enemy that doesn't get killed in one hit, you lose that shield. Fire Wave, well, in order to charge it off, in order to charge it up, you have to constantly use it, and then it just shoots a little wave of fire along the ground, which isn't even all that powerful, so meh. Storm Tornado, you charge it up, you shoot a vertical tornado that blocks things from coming to you, and it's pretty powerful, I suppose. Electric Spark, charge that up, kills everything on screen! <laughs> and it's not uh, that much energy either, so it's pretty useful. Boomer Cutter, charge that up. Sends all these cutters all over the screen and damages them, and yeah, it's alright. And when you charge up Chill Penguin's special move, you create this little surfboard, this ice board, in front of you, that as soon as you jump on it, it rides forward until uh, it runs into a wall or something. Not useful all that much, I don't think. It might be good for taking out, well, no, not even Spark Mandrill, because you can still stun lock Spark Mandrill. Certainly not good for the Sigma boss in uh, Castle 1, but, uh, oh well. In order to get this hard tank, you have to make sure that you definitely killed Launch Octopus, because if you didn't kill Launch Octopus, there would not be water here. And the buoyancy lets you jump higher, and it lets you reach that hard tank no problem. So there's that. But uh, yeah, we got the X-Buster, uh, the Dr. Light version anyway. There is another Buster upgrade. Uh, if you're familiar with the original Mega Man X, it's the same exact scenario. Uh, but they have changed it a little bit for this remake. But even so, to the people who say that I should have saved and waited for that extra other buster, it's not that much better. It, it, it's barely better. It's just a different buster that does a different effect other than the pink laser. So I don't really need it. It's not that important or special. Plus, if I want the super secret special weapon, which I'll be showing off in this video, oh, I need an arm cannon. I need an arm upgrade, damn it. <laughs> but as for Sting Chameleon stage, uh, this has always been one of the easier stages. Not so much the boss itself. Sting Chameleon can be a little bit tricky if you're not used to him. But uh, in terms of levels, this has always been a rather simple level. It gives you a free man right here. You can, uh, there's no real bottomless pits, not too many. And then at the very end, you get to ride in a ride armor! We briefly saw it in Chill Penguin stage, but here it is. All it can do is swing its fists straight ahead, and anything that's smaller than uh, most enemies, you'll probably just swing over them, which is kind of annoying. But, uh, hey, it can take damage for you. You don't lose health when you get hit in it. And hit, hit it, hit it, hit, oh! 
damn it, right armor, why can't you just, like, pound the ground? That would be useful. <laughs> but no! But again, I like the right armor, you know. Let's just save health. It's good for farming health and collecting power-ups. And uh, it can dash and stuff, and it's all swell. You can always jump out of it whenever you want. But warning, if you leave the screen and decide to go back to it because you want to ride it again, it'll be gone. Someone will steal it. Some sneaky maverick thieves in these jungles. <laughs> Poor little X. Everyone's betrayed you. Sting Chameleon! So Sigma's even managed to pull you into his scheme! That's Master Sigma to you, X! He'll be king when the new world is born! Treat him with respect! I don't want to live in a world with him in charge! I'm ready! So Sting Chameleon is weak to the Boomerang Cutter. And again, you always want to shoot it when you're standing and not when you're jumping, because the cutter goes downwards when you jump. Uh, so just stand and shoot. Uh, every now and then, instead of going into into uh, into the bushes to like either rain spikes down from the ceiling or shoot his three laser tail at you, he'll just dive for you and then try licking you with his tongue. You can easily jump out of the way of that like I'm doing here, but uh, you gotta watch out for that. The only thing that's kind of tricky is just dodging the three lasers, if only because you kind of expect him to shake the bushes and make the, the spikes fall from the ceiling, but then he surprises you with a laser cannon, and it's really hard to dodge because it's spread out three shots, you know? Uh, Stink Chameleon can be a little bit tricky if you don't have his weakness, but uh, he's nothing the great Clement can't handle. I am Mega Man X, and I have vanquished all the Mavericks! <laughs> And by defeating Sting Chameleon, you get, and I'm not kidding, you're gonna love the name of this, Chameleon Sting! Ha! <laughs> they just, they reversed the words. Anyhow, you shoot three lasers. It's swell, it's powerful, but, uh, you know, that's that. We have an incoming transmission. It's zero. Get this info to X. I've discovered Sigma's base. I'm sending the coordinates now. We've located you, Zero. I'm on my way. Okay, but listen. This place is more secure than I thought. Let's split up their forces. Find another route in. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. So now we're at the Sigma Castle, and we can go and face off with Bow Spider. But uh, before I do that, I am going to go back to the levels and collect the remaining items that I'm missing. So I'm back in Spark Mandrill stage. Here you can see, because I've killed Storm Eagle, the jet crashed into the level. And now most of the level is going to go into Blackout, Black On, Black On, <laughs> Blackout, and turning on the lights back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And, you know. The sub tank is on the bottom pathway here, and you need Boomerang Cutter to get it, and you need to jump when you use it so that it goes downwards and retrieves it for you. And booyah, there's another sub tank. Later on during the level, you also need Boomer Cutter to get this heart tank that originally, in the original game, you could dash jump to, but not in this game. You need the cutter in order to get that heart tank. And then they went back to Boomerang Kawanger stage and went back up the tower to get the heart tank that I couldn't get before. Again, with the Boomer Cutter. So, uh, yeah. That's all the heart tanks. That's all the sub tanks. I got all the Dr. Light upgrades. But there is still one more piece of technology that I would like to have. The secret weapon, the Hadouken! Get all the upgrades, the heart tanks, and then go to Armored Armadillo stage. Make it to the high cliff above the boss door without getting hurt. This is very different from the Super Nintendo method where you had to keep going to that cliff multiple times. You just have to finish the level with all your upgrades without getting hurt. You can't get damaged at all. Stink Chameleon's weapon is a great tool for getting through without getting hurt. But when you get to the end, here's a new Dr. Light upgrade to get. Ah, X. So you've made it this far, have you? Enter this castle, and you will receive an ability that only a few people have been able to master through intense training. Since your soul is nearly human, I suspect you can master it. X, feel the power flowing in you. Learn to throw fireballs! So Mega Man X has Chi. He can summon fireballs through his Chi. <laughs> But uh, this is Hadou Hadouken. It's a Street Fighter staple, and in order to perform it, Dr. Light never actually explains this, you have to push down, forward, and then the shoot button. The Hadouken is so powerful, it can kill any boss 
Yes, even Sigma in this remake in one hit. One hit! So, uh, the Hadouken's very powerful, and if you get it, no boss is a challenge for you. Uh, but you have to be full health if you want to use it. If you've been damaged a little bit, you can't perform it, but if your health is all the way at the max, down forward X, or down forward square, rather, and Hadouken! Hadouken! <laughs> Mark Gartha, the voice of X, actually does the Hadouken, too. He even says Hadouken. I know that's a big problem a lot of people don't like, because he always announces the name of the weapon he's doing. Storm Tornado! Storm Tornado! Storm Tornado! Shotgun Ice! Shotgun Ice! So, uh... Sorry, that's what the remake does. You can't really change that. Hey, underwater, th this is different. I mentioned this in part one, guys, but uh, now this is where the remake starts to be a little bit different. The Sigma Castle's level layout has been changed completely. So now we start off with an underwater section when the original Sigma 1 didn't have that. And uh, we're still going to be going through and fighting all the Mavericks again, and I will be speeding them up with comical music, as I always do. Well, not so much comical, just badass music. But uh, the levels are different. You are going to be uh, in for a surprise when you come to this castle, having been familiar with the original Super Nintendo game. But anywho, boss rush. Launch Octopus? I am Launch Octopus. I am under orders to deal with any intruders. Sigma must have brought his body back to life. I have been ordered to fight. I'm using the Final Fantasy boss themes from all the games in order to uh, make the boss rush better. But uh, yeah, the layout is different, and uh, what is also different about Sigma 1, you're not going to run into Vile or uh, Zero. That has been saved for Sigma 3. So uh, they have changed that little detail, and uh, it also means that if you didn't find the Dr. Light upgrade to make your arm cannon better, you would actually have to get through some pretty tough parts without the charge feature, without the ability to go invincible with Sting Chameleon's ability, without the ability to kill one one-shot enemies who get killed in one hit with the rolling shield ability, you, you know, and there's a lot of wall jumping in this place and a lot of spawning turrets that constantly, you go off screen, but then they come back, you know, like you sort of, you go high enough to kill it, but then you accidentally drop down to the floor again, and when you start climbing the wall, the turret is back. I never understood how that worked in Mega Man, but you know, whatever. <laughs> it's just like Dr. Wily and Sigma and every Mega Man villain has always had this this army of robots that just instantaneously replenishes and comes back to the position it's supposed to be. So when X goes forward onto the Maverick, you just know that behind him all the robots are back there doing their business, just being like, well, Mega Man X got through, but hey, I'm gonna be the best turret ever. <laughs> I'm going to be the best Shield Joe, or whatever the fuck my name is, and everyone's going to love me. Ah, uh, you know, it's a video game. I don't question why the turrets come back immediately when you just go off screen a little bit. Whatever. Whatever. But yeah, it's just interesting, because I thought that was like the best part of the original game. Without the, the Buster upgrade, the inability to charge weapons and get through a lot of these wall climbing parts with the turrets, it's easy to get killed if you haven't been collecting heart tanks or whatnot. So they sort of made it so that Zero would have to give you help. He would have to give you that upgrade so that the levels would be a lot more manageable. Again, I thought the original Mega Man X was incredibly well designed and it was such a stellar Mega Man game. But in this version, if you didn't get the Dr. Light arm cannon, and there's no zero in Sigma 1, you kind of have to do this without the buster. But again, the level design is better to accommodate those players. The level design is different, so I'm not, you know, complaining too much. Anywho, here is Bow Spider. He's weak to Chill Penguin's weapon. I would not recommend charging up the surfboard because it's a very exact hit and the surfboard is pretty slow. I mean, if you're an expert player, maybe you can hit the core with the surfboard, but uh, either way. 
you can only damage him when the eye is exposed, and it's only exposed when he touches the ground. And it's only for a brief period of time, too. Like, you could be a little second late, and the eye will close, and you won't actually damage him and whatnot. Obviously, the pattern is very simple. He always crosses a line he comes up to. So you're always trying to look out and see which lines he will be going to. You can look at his route before he actually goes it, and you just want to get out of the way of where he'll be landing so you don't run into him. Occasionally, he'll spawn these little tiny spiders, which you can destroy with a very well-placed storm tornado from either side of the wall, and it's all good, kitties. <laughs> I love Bow Spider though, I always loved reading his pattern, and I just love the, the flow of this boss fight, I always have. Is it Bow Spider or is it Boss Spider? Either way, lame. Actually, I love Bow Spider. Bow Spider is what you should call him. I don't care. Damn it! I should have hit him, but for some reason that was too early! Ah, oh, well. That, ladies and gentlemen, is Bow Spider. He did not get any harder from the original game, so that's him again. <laughs> we will move on to Sigma 2 and the redesigned levels and the finale in part 6, so uh, stay tuned for that one.